What's up guys, it's BlueTTCG back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and today I'm going to show a deck profile for an Aiden's deck. Um, this is a deck I've been experimenting um, ev with ever since the new support in Ghost from the Past Haunted, the second haunting, um, whatever the set's called, ever since we got the new support from that set. Uh, the support is actually extremely good. I think uh, Majesty Hyperion, along with the Agent of Destruction Venus and the Agent of Life Neptune especially, um, provide an excellent way for agents to... Um, execute some new combos that they weren't able to in the past, um, be able to get up some negates, and even a or more consistently able to search out Arthur Krishna to perform a Krishna lock on the first turn. So let's go over some of the cards that we have in this deck. Um, we're starting out with the, the basics. We've got Triple Mystical Shine Ball. This card has been in Agents for uh, a long time, especially if you guys remember the deck from uh, its iteration over 10 years ago. This card was being run, and we're still running it because it is essential in order to get the uh, the necessary pluses from our main combo going. Um, unfortunately, it is a brick, so you can decide to run uh, less than or over 40 cards if you want, just to make sure that you don't see Mystical Shine Ball as often. But we're still running 40 cards just because we have a lot of starters that we want to see, and uh, we're accepting the risk of seeing Mystical Shine Balls in our hand, which um, I haven't had too, I haven't had it appear in my starting hand too many times. Um, about one or two can appear in your starting hand. Two is if you're unlucky. Um, one is not unusual, but uh, we're still usually able to make our main plays even with one of these bricks in our hand. And then next up for the next brick, we've got Trias Hierarchia. It's not as bad of a brick as Mystical Shine Ball, to be honest, but um, if you don't have Diviner of the Herald in your hand, then this card is definitely going to be um, clogging your hand a little bit. So we're just running the one copy to uh, combo with Diviner of the Herald. Diviner of the Herald is what sends Trias Hierarchus off of its effect. Trias Hierarchia, <laughs> apologies, off of its effect. And then use Trias Harakia to set, uh, to tribute Diviner of the Herald, and then bring this out. And then you can use Diviner of the Herald to summon something like the Agent of Life Neptune, or even an Agent of Mystery Earth, depending on what your board situation is looking like from then. Then we've got one copy of Archlord Christia, because um, as I mentioned before, we're actually able to search this card off our main combo with uh, Celestial Night Lord Parshith, which we'll go over pretty soon. But um, this card is what allows us to get a pretty pretty gnarly combo inboard. Um, the opponent is not able to special summon as well as us because it's reciprocal. And also, um, you're able to recur a fairy back to your hand if you ever special summon it by its own effect. But actually, most of the time, we're summoning this off of Celestial Night Lord Parshit's effect. So, um, the adding a fairy back to your hand doesn't come up that often. But when it does come up, make sure to take advantage of it. Then next up, we've got another one of one copy of Master Hyperion. Um, we're not really trying to run more than one of this because... You can only special summon this from your hand, um, so it's kind of a brick. And then also, uh, the way we're using this is to break boards uh, as part of our going second kind of combo, or you know, just for OTKs in general. Um, if your opponent has a couple of back row or a couple of boss monsters that you need to get rid of, then you can use Master Hyperion to pop those cards. Next up is Majesty Hyperion at three copies. This card is actually amazing. Um, the fact that it can special summon from Graveyard is actually what makes it fantastic in this deck as one of the new cards. And also, we're going to be mainly banishing uh, the Agent of Life Neptune off of this effect in order to get Agent of Life Neptune's search into Sa Sanctuary in the Sky, which allows us to get most of our good effects in the Agent's deck off. And then the second effect to banish a monster, or banish a card, pardon me, from either Graveyard is actually very non-trivial. It does come up, especially in the modern meta. Um, it comes up a lot against Sky Striker. It can come up against even Branded Despia. But keep in mind, it is not a quick effect. So you do have to make sure to use it during your own turn and make sure that if there's any threats in the graveyard, then you get rid of them right away. Otherwise, you're going to you're not going to be able to do it during your opponent's turn. The nice thing about it, though, is that you do get to do it twice per turn if you have Sanctuary in the Sky in the field. Actually the field or either graveyard, so pardon me. That is very important to note about the newer agents' cards. They do allow you to use their better effects when you have Sanctuary in the Sky, even in the graveyard. And uh, just to mention this right away, uh, both Sacred Water of the Sky and um, Fallen Sanctuary count as Sanctuary in the Sky in the graveyard. Next up is three copies of Trickstar Korobane. This card is uh, just our starter, basically. We need a generic fairy starter in order to go into our main link monster because... Um, agents don't really have a good way of consistently making two two bodies on their own, so you do need a generic fairy starter, which is what Trickstar Corbane is. And you can decide to run a larger Trickstar package with Trickstar Light Stage, as well as um, I I believe there's like some link or some level one or level two card that 
when you link summon it into a trick star monster, it special summons back. So those are also like alternate options if you want to run uh, more ways of going into your link too with the trick star package. But uh, in my personal experience, I, f I felt like uh, the three trick star core is sufficient for that purpose. Next up is the best card for our combos, the Age of Creation Venus. I'm sure you guys know what this does if you guys have played Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, 10 years ago or, or more. On a not once per turn, we get to special summon Mystical Shine Ball from our hander deck by paying 500 life points. So this is what this is the card that we're trying to go into at some point during our combo lines, and um, pretty much you want this to resolve uh, every single turn in some in some way or the other, either through our synchro copy effect or by just summoning this uh, raw and then using its effect from there. So make sure you bait out some negates if you feel like your opponent has those uh, before going into this because you do want this to resolve. Because uh, Imperm or Veiler will definitely be the end of the day for you. Next up is one copy of the Agent of Destruction Venus. This card is not very good. It, it would be good if it allowed you to use both of its effects in the same turn. But sadly, it is a one effect per turn and only once that turn. So uh, it's not as good, but it's still useful 100%. Um, if you've gone into the full cycle of Mystical Shine Balls and you've used them all, they're going to all be in your graveyard or banish because maybe you banish them with Maj Majesty Hyperion or Master Hyperion. Then you use the Agent of Destruction Venus to basically bring all of them back to your field. And then when they leave the field, they go back to the bottom. So then you can summon them back again with Venus. It's it's cr it's pretty crazy how much you can plus with that combo. So Agent of Destruction Venus is pretty good. But most of the time, you don't really want to see it in your hand because it is kind of a brick. It is somewhat of an extender if you need it. Um, for example, if you normal summon Earth and then you go into Almirage, you can use this Venus to banish Earth from the grave and then summon it and then go into your Link 2. That's like another option of, uh, that's another way of going into your Link 2 with uh, one card or two cards in your hand in this case. Speaking of which, next card is Agent Mystery Earth at three copies. I wanted to run this card at two copies at first because it's you don't really want to see more than one copy of this in your hand. It's really bad. Um, but this is your main normal summon, so I was like, all right, it's fine. It's probably fine to run three copies, and we don't have that many ways. We don't have that many ways of searching it before our normal summon. Um, the really the only way to search before the normal summon is Sacred Water to the Sky. So I do think it's worth running the three copies. Um, but uh, if this gets negated, it's not the end of the world. You do have plenty of other ways to go into your, your link to eventually, um, such as with Diviner of the Herald or having an Agent of Creation Venus plus a Neptune in your hand. Um, those are alternate ways of going into the link too. Then we have Diviner of the Herald. Um, I mentioned before you go you use this to go into Trias Hierarchia, and then uh, you you use that combo to go into your link too. Now I will say Diviner of the Herald. Uh, we don't really use it for the tuner, but because it is a tuner, you can go into Halk from this. Not that that's incredibly useful, but it is an option if you're trying to link climb. Um, and we do run access code, so that is an option available. Next is Herald of Orange Light. Herald of Orange Light is for you know your generic fairy monster negate. Uh, we do happen to end our turn with a couple of fairies in our hand left over. So if you have one of these in your hand, you can just save it and use it on your opponent's turn. Or if, you, if you're going second, make sure to use this on your opponent's turn so that you get this and a fairy in your grave, such as Neptune, or even getting Venus in the grave is not bad at all. Uh, basically, you can use this to interrupt your opponent's plays and also get a fairy in your grave that allow you to do your combo more easily. Then is Buten. So <laughs> this card is interesting. Um, it's not the most amazing, but... Basically, if you send this off of Diviner or even off of um, some of our other cards that can send fairies, um, basically, if you if you can get this in the graveyard during your combo, you can actually use this to set Mystical Shine Ball as a tuner and then use it and Majesty Hyperion to sink into Majesty Flare Hyperion, or Master Flare Hyperion, pardon me. And that way, you're able to do that without having Earth as your specific tuner on the field. Sometimes you're not able to get a level 2 tuner on the field otherwise, so... Having Bootin available is actually really useful, but uh, one copy, of course, because it's not the card you really want to see. But uh, this card is probably your best card to go into off your Hauk line. Um, if you do, if you use Hauk to go uh, into Bootin, and then you use Hauk plus Bootin plus, let's say, something else to go into, uh, you can go into either Dogda, so just using Hauk and Bootin, or you can also use Hauk plus Bootin plus something else to go into Appaloosa. Those are like options to get Bhutan in the grave, and then eventually you use Bhutan's effect to go from there. Speaking of which, uh, uh, let's go into Neptune. So Neptune is one of your best cards to see in your hand. Um, it allows you to, if you have a, 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 an agent monster in the grave, you can discard this to special summon that. You can also do the, that from your hand as well. 
And then if this card is banished, you add Sanctuary in the Sky from your deck to your hand, which is amazing because Sanctuary in the Sky, again, allows you to get all your extra effects. Not to mention that uh, Neptune uh, happens to be level 1, um, which can be... Uh, it, it's a little weird... It's a little weird to use it as like your synchro, uh, like you don't really use it as your uh, synchro material, but sometimes it helps out with making some of your boss monsters over here. So keep that in mind that it is a level one. But uh, this is one of the main cards that you want to see during your combo line. You're gonna send this off of um, the Link Monster, which is Moon. Um, you can also send this off of a uh, Herald if you activate Herald's effect, and etc. etc. Next up, uh, hand traps in the main deck. We're running only three Veiler. We're not really running any other hand trap. This is the hand trap I just prefer. Um, you can pretty much replace this with any other hand trap that you'd like. For example, Ash is pretty good right now, um, of course, for the brand of matchup. Uh, Ogre used to be kind of good, but Adventure has kind of uh, been dying down lately. So uh, do you know? Do use Ghost Ogre with some like keep in mind that Ghost Ogre might not be the go-to hand trap right now. Uh, but basically, you can switch this out for any hand trap that you prefer. Then, for the spell traps, we've got three copies of Sacred Water. This searches basically all your agents um, that are important, and also gives you some life points, because, you know, you pay life points for Venus, so, uh, you know, if you if you don't want to lose in time, then make sure to activate this afterwards to get the life points back. And then it has a replacement effect to protect your uh, monster that mentions Sacred and Disguise from being destroyed by battle. Does come up, but not very often. Then next up, we got Upstart Goblin. Um... I just wanted to slot in something to make it 40 cards. You can replace this with whatever you want. And then uh, Call by the Grave, of course. Uh, I wish this card were at 3, but it's at 1, sadly. Next up is Sanctuary in the Sky. We're only wanting one copy because you're going to be searching it very easily. It's, it's super easy to search this off of your main combo line. And uh, you don't really need more than one. You don't want to see it in your opening hand. And then for the traps, we've only got the two traps, two copies of Fallen Sanctuary. This card is actually extremely good. Um, it's basically a monster negate um, that does not involve any cards in your hand because you banish fairy from your grave. And you can potentially go plus off of it if you haven't already searched Sanctuary in the Sky. But generally, this uh, this continuous trap is actually searchable off of Celestial Night Lord Parshith because it is a card that specifically lists Sanctuary in the Sky in its text. So if you go into your Celestial Night Lord Parshith line and you don't have Sanctuary in the Sky on the field, you can actually search into Lost Sanctuary, or Fallen Sanctuary, pardon me, and you're able to get a monster negate. And you can also use this uh, to search out Sacred Waters in the Sky, which allows you to search out another one of your agents, such as Earth, which allows you to search out another one of your agents. So uh, you can use this as a searcher for your searcher for your searcher, if you'd like. But it's actually a good card at two copies. I feel like it's pretty good. Uh, I don't like. I, I wouldn't run three copies if I were you, because um, you, you kind of don't want it to clog your hand. You do want to see combo pieces, but this card is pretty good to run at two copies. <clears throat> Alright, for the extra deck, we're going to speed through this one, because a lot of them are generic pieces. Uh, but... Master Flare Hyperion is your boss monster. Uh, this is actually a really good card. Um, it allows you to copy a, something like Venus or um, or the other Venus. Like both both Venuses you can copy with Master Flare Hyperion. And you can also get a quick effect banish, um, a targeting banish when your opponent activates a card effect. A card or effect. So a uh, really good card actually. Um, you, you pretty much always want to be going into this for your combos. Next up is Baron. You know, generic synchro boss monster. Omni Negate. Uh, and then we've got Borla Savage. I've never gotten to Borla Savage, but it is an option um, if you can make level 8 and you've Link Summoned that turn, which you usually will because of Moon. But uh, generally, Borla is kind of not your main go-to synchro, so. Uh, but it is an option. It's available. Then we've got Pluto. I haven't gotten to Pluto that much either, to be honest. But it's actually a pretty good card. Uh, it's a quick effect Book of Moon when you have Sanctuary in the Sky on the field. So very non-trivial. And uh, if you want, you could also send this off of Diviner of the Herald to add Sanctuary in the Sky if you're not able to do that with uh, Neptune. Sometimes that is the case, but most of the time Diviner here will send Trias, so that's not really something that you go into often. And then uh, one Xyz monster, Hope Harbinger. Uh, you know, if you happen to make two Master Flare, or uh, two Majesty Hyperion, or a Majesty Hyperion and a Master Hyperion, then you can Xyz them into Hope Harbinger, but most of the time, not worth it. Uh, depends really on what your situation is on your board. Um, and if you can afford to go into this card. And then for the links, we've got access code, standard stuff, Opelousa. Opelousa is actually extremely good in this deck because it is a fairy monster. So it kind of synergizes with a lot of what we're running. Um, and then Celestial Nightlord Parshath is phenomenal. Probably the best link monster uh, for this deck. You can search out most of the cards that we're running. 
and it can also special summon the fairy from our hand, um, which ma mainly using that to go into Christia. And Christia is amazing in this deck too because Celestial Nightlord Parshith can accomplish that all in one card. It can search out Christia as long as you have Sanctuary and Sky on the field, and it can special summon Christia on that same turn. So really, really good card. And then we got two Moon. Uh, moon is you. You want this to resolve. If, you, if this doesn't resolve, you probably lose. Um, most of the time, you're going to be sending Neptune off of this, but you can also send Ma uh, Majesty Hyperion. Um, basically, whatever you're trying to look for, you can also send Venus. Depends on kind of the combo that you're going for. But this card is really flexible, and it does have a tribute to pop a card in the field. Um, this does come up when you're going second, but most of the time you're not going to be using it. Keep in mind that whatever you summon off of Neptune, however, uh, you can't tribute it, and neither can your opponent. Which actually does come up, so uh, you just make sure you know that if you summon Moon off of Neptune, you cannot tribute Moon herself for her own effect. You have to tribute something else. And then we got one copy of Dagda. Um, I was considering running Scythe, so that's why Dagda's kind of in here. But then I realized that uh, we don't have a quick effect pop, so Dagda's actually mainly in here so that we can go into access code more easily. Because uh, you can use Dagda plus, you, in order to make Dagda, you can use like Mystical Shine Ball. And then another Mystical Shine Ball that's been linked into, let's say, Link Spider. And then you can make Dagda, and then you can use that to go into Axis Code more easily, or even Opelousa. But uh, otherwise, it was like kind of a, a residue from what I was testing earlier with Scythe. But I don't think Scythe really works well in this deck. It's kind of not worth it. Definitely, you can cut this card. And then next up is Halk. Halk is used to go into Buten most of the time, but you can also go into something like Earth. If you want Earth in the Grave, then you link them both off to go into something else. And then, uh, of course, you got Earth in the Graves. So now you can use Neptune to summon back Earth, or you can banish Earth to summon something like Master Hyperion or Majesty Hyperion. So Halk is actually pretty good in this deck, but we're not really using it that much. Um, it does have a second effect during your opponent's turn to summon a Synchro from your from your extra deck. You can use that to go into something like uh, Baron, but most of the time we're not really going to be using Halk for this. Then we got Herald of Mirage Lights. It does come up a lot, actually, because um, we can just make this off of two Mystical Shine Balls. Spell Trap Negate by sending a Fairy Monster from our hand to the grave. Pretty good, actually. But because it's 600 attack, it can be easily just handled by your opponent. They can just beat over it in order to get rid of it, but it does actually help out a lot for this deck. Then we got Link Spider and Almirage. Uh, Link Spider just to make an effect monster off of Mystical Shine Ball. And then Almirage to... Uh, if, if, if you don't have enough bodies to make Moon, um, then you'd basically just Normal Summon Earth, for example. Use Almirage to get Earth in the grave. Then after that, you use Neptune to summon back Earth and then go into Moon. So Almirage is uh, pretty standard for decks that can't make Link 2s as easily. And then the side deck is pretty much whatever you want. Um, this is what I've got here. Uh, you know, use your discretion here. I think DD Crow is really good this meta, but uh, you can, again, you can run whatever you want in the side deck. Uh, and that's, that's about it. Let's go ahead and do some hand test. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some hand test and... Uh, some replays. So this first one is against the AI, so just keep in mind that we're just trying to test out the hand. We're not focused on how the AI responds to our plays per se, but let's go ahead and load this up and take a look at our starting hand before uh, proceeding with this. So looking at this, we have a pretty solid hand here actually. Um, opening Mystical Shine Ball is pretty much characteristic for this deck, but no worries. We've got the Neptune, we've got the Divine with the Herald, and we've got the Magic Shape Herion, which is actually good to see in our hand most of the time, especially if you have the Neptune in our hand. We'd start off with the Sacred Water in the Sky just to see if they have any hand traps, scout those out. Otherwise, we'd go into Earth here, probably, just so that we can get something in our hand that we can start out with. Um, you can also choose to get Venus if you want, but um, Earth isn't terrible of an option to go into. Let's go ahead and see what this is. We're, I think we're going second in this one, so um, basically we have no interaction with our opponent. Um, the, the AI is running Sky Striker, which is on a pretty much an older ban list, so uh, I believe they're running some illegal ratios of certain cards to so just engage at 3 and uh, Widow Anchor at 3. So bear that in mind, but it's not a huge deal for us. So it's our turn now. We have another Diviner of the Herald. We start off with the Sacred Water of the Skies. It gets Ashed. All right. So then we go into Diviner of the Herald. It gets negated by Widow Anchor. So fortunately, that is the end of our turn. Um, we do have one more extension with Majesty Hyperion, but then it gets Widow Anchored. We still get the Neptune to get Sanctuary in the Sky. This is going to protect us, protect us from some battle damage on the opponent's turn. But of course, then they have another Widow Anchor to go into Majesty Hyperion. So uh, here's where the AI misplays a little bit, of course. It doesn't link off the Majesty Hyperion, which, you know, ordinarily would matter, but thankfully Majesty Hyperion does actually have the ability to summon itself from the graveyard. It's just that I wouldn't have been able to do so with this current graveyard situation, so it would have been better to link it off. But then we normal summon Diviner, we go into Trias Harkia, then trigger it to tribute Diviner of the Herald, which triggers its effect to summon Buten, and then Buten's going to give us Majesty Flare Hyperion, then we're going to trigger uh, 
Mastery Flare up here and to send Venus and then use the effect of Venus as if it were the card to get Mystical Shine Balls. And then we want to banish Ray before continuing with our combo just to make sure that we don't get interrupted by that. And then we go into Baron to break the board. We use Majesty Hyperion to summon it back. And then we <laughs> get another Mystical Shine Ball just for fun. And that is game on board. Um, so as you can see, this deck has the capability of going really explosive if you, if you give it any room. We just had the Fallen Sanctuary in our hand uh, as a last resort, just in case we weren't able to get the OTK. That way we have some interaction with our opponent on their turn. We have a Monster Negate as well as the Baron Omni Negate, so really good stuff in that first replay. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. This is against a real player. Um, I believe they were playing, uh, let me just take a look to remember here. They were playing some kind of deck that had fairies. I believe it involved a Dogmatica engine, as we can see there. So I believe they went first. Um, they didn't have the greatest opener, but they're running 60 cards, so perhaps that's uh, not unusual for their deck. But let's go ahead and see what they did. They did Foolish Burial into Metal Foes Fusion, and then use that to draw one card. Um, then Mystical Shine Ball into Amirage. Then we go into Disciple of the Nadir to get Ecclesia, sending Pegasus. And then we Monster Negate the Ecclesia with Herald of Orange Light, which ends their turn, unfortunately. So with this hand, we're actually able to get full combo because they don't have any hand traps against the Venus. Really good for us. Of course, if they did, we had the Call by the Grave. So we were pretty safe for the most part. Then we go into Moon, Trigger Moon to get Neptune in the Grave. Then we go into Celestial Nightmare Parshith, sending Valor to get Magic Hyperion, Banish it to uh, summon it, and then we get Neptune's effect, add the Sanctuary of the Sky. Then we want to get rid of the Pegasus before we continue, just to make sure we don't forget. Then we use Magic Hyperion again to banish Ecclesia because we had Sanctuary in the Sky. Then uh, because we sent, because we had four monsters in our grave after banishing those two uh, cards that we banished for Magic Hyperion, we were able to summon Christia by its own effect, and then the opponent scooped it up there knowing that it was going to be hard to come back from that. Um, so notice how with this hand configuration, we were actually able to summon Christia by its own effect without needing Celestial Nightler parse its own, uh, own effect to summon Christia off of sending a fairy from our field to the grave. Works out sometimes, but uh, of course, opening Christia isn't always the best. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Um, here we've got a hand test, just so a sample inboard. Um, this starting hand's pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at it quickly before we continue. So obviously we've got Upstart and a Searcher. This Searcher should probably grab Earth because we already have the Neptune and the Venus. And then we have Valor on our opponent's turn just in case, you know, we want to interact with them. But let's go ahead and take, check it out. We've got Sacred Water to get Earth. Normal Summon Earth, I imagine, is the play after we get Upstart Goblin to draw one card. We drew Master Flare, or Majesty up here, in, pardon me, which is amazing. Then we go into Neptune to summon Venus from hand. We use Venus, summon Mystical Shine Ball. Number two, and number three. Then we link two of them off from Moon. Moon is going to send Magic Appear, and then we use that to uh, banish Neptune. And then we trigger Neptune and get Sanctuary in the Sky. Celestial Night of Parts is sending Magic Appear to add Christia. And then we sink into uh, Master Flare Appear, and we send Venus to copy its effect, the Destruction Venus, which allows us to get Mystical Shine Balls from our graveyard. And those are going to go to the bottom when they're sent. We're going to link one of them into Link Spider. And then because we send it to the grave, we're going to trigger Celestial Art Parsha to summon Christia. And then we pass turn on that. We pass turn on a Spell Trap Negate, which we aren't able to leverage here because we don't have a Fairy in our hand. But we do have a Veiler in our hand, as well as a Quick Effect Targeting Banish with our Master Flare Perion. And our opponent cannot Special Summon. So they pretty much need something like Dark Ruler in order to beat this board. All right. Our next one is against another uh, real opponent. Um, I believe uh, we went first in this one. No, we went we went uh, we went first because our opponent opted for us to go first. They're playing Plunder, so uh, they didn't really open too well. But um, let's go ahead and see what we've got here. Of course, they have no hand traps, so uh, even with how you know poor this hand might look, this is full combo because all we need is the Sacred Water in the Sky to search what we need because um, we can use Almirage here. So we get Sacred Water in the Sky, add Earth, Earth to add. Uh, let's see, probably Venus. Nope, a Neptune. See, uh, link into Almirage, then use Neptune to summon Earth. And then we use uh, Majesty Appear on Banish Neptune, trigger Neptune's effect, add Sanctuary in the Sky, sync those off for Majesty Flare. And then Majesty Flare is going, Master Flare is going to send Venus, copy the effect. We're going to trigger it three times to get three Mystical Shine Balls. Again, we're going to use some for Celestial Night with Parshith, all three of them. Then we're going to discard Valor to add Lost Sanctuary. We could have added Krishna, but um, notice how here we don't have a way of really getting Fairy Monster in the graveyard. But then here they Lightning Storm, so we're going to trigger Amraj in response to protect Celestial Nightmare Parshat. Then Chain Link 2, we're going to activate Fallen Sanctuary to get uh, our Searcher for next turn, plus set up our Monster Negate. So then they Xyz Summon into this Xyz Monster. We're going to negate the effect after they activate it, and then they Scoop up here. 
So uh, obviously we had a lot of interaction with our opponent that turn. We had also the quick effect targeting banish as well as the monster negates on the herald. So this inboard, despite not having a Christian on it, was pretty strong to say the least. All right, this one is going to be against the AI. So um, we'll make this one quick. Um, I don't know who went first in this one. It looks like we went first, so we start with a Corbane, trigger it, and then we summon Earth to add Neptune, link those two off into Moon. Moon sending Majesty appear in, which makes sense. We're going to trigger Neptune to summon Earth, and then we're going to summon Majesty appear in by its own effect into Master Flare appear in, sending uh, Venus with its effect, and then we're going to use it as if it were Venus to summon three Mystical Shine Balls. We already had Sanctuary in the Sky in our hands, so sadly Neptune was a little weird here, but sometimes that can happen. We link those two off to go into Celestial Nether Parshith, then we're going to send an Herald of Orange Light to uh, go into, I believe, um, Christia from our deck, and then we summon Christia because we sent a Fairy Monster with the Link Summon, and of course our opponent passes on nothing because of Christia. They didn't have an out they didn't have an answer to it except for Chalice, but we did have the negation on the Chalice, so uh, it was looking rough for them regardless, and uh, we proceed to OTK the following turn. So the Christian inboard with Spell Trap Negate is very strong. Very, very strong. The next one we have here is, again, against the AI Sword Soul. I don't know if we went first or second for this one. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, we went first for this one. So we summon Korobane, normal summon Diviner. It gets Ashed, no problem. We have enough material to go into Moon. But we have the Trias Arharchia in our hand, which is hilarious. Uh, this allows us to get more bodies on the board for Moon. Trigger Moon sending Majesty Flare, er, excuse me, Majesty Hyperion. I always get those names mixed up. We banish it for its effect to add Sanctuary in the Sky. Then we're going to discard Master Appearing um, to add Christia. We get to summon Christia because we have four fairies in our grave. And then we get to add back the Master Appearing and pass on the Christia lock. So our opponent only had the Imperm to respond. But we did have some interaction beyond that if the AI were a little smarter. Sadly, the AI doesn't know to use Imperm on the Christia. So this will proceed to be an OTK after we use the Searcher that we searched last turn with the trap to add Earth. It gets impermed, but no problem, we have a game on board. Alright, and we've got a couple more here. So, we've got an OTK against the AI Sword Soul once again. Um, this is similar to the last game, I believe, but uh, we go second in this one. So, they start with the Long Yuan trigger to get the token sync into Qi Xiao, or Cheng Ying, pardon me. Alright, some damage there. Ecclesia to summon Taya. Taya effect to get the token. Sync those into Chi Xiao. Chi Xiao is going to chain link one, chain link two, Taya, sending Moye, and then adding blackout. Kind of standard source soul board here. Um, no Tenny side, but the blackout set is going to be hard for us to deal with if not if only we didn't have the evenly match. So evenly match. Uh, obviously those weren't the best things to banish. They should have saved uh, probably one of the um, Sword Soul boss monsters, but here they didn't have any hand traps, so we can go full combo after doing Corbane into Venus. Let's link some of those Mystical Shine Balls off into Moon. Of course we opened the other Mystical Shine Ball, sadly. But we discard that one for Celestial Nether Parshit, then adding Ma Majesty Hyperion, then uh, of course we're going to banish the Neptune to get Sanctuary in the Sky. And then we banish a couple cards from their graveyard just to leverage that. Um, of course we can't kill them because the battle phase was already used, but we do have a couple of interaction with our opponent. Um, they decide to use what they have in their hand, which they will. They go into Long Yuan, and this is going into Baron. Um, Baron's going to interact a little weirdly with what we just did here. We're going to use the um, Monster Gate in response to Baron pop, but then it gets negated by Baron's other effect, so Celestial Nightmare Parshit goes away. And they probably should have gotten rid of the Venus, of course the AI doesn't know that much better, but we did op we did draw for turn the Sacred Water of the Sky. A little sad that we had the other one face down as well, but it's okay because we have the Earth. It resolves successfully, so we get the Neptune to summon Moon. And then we banish uh, Neptune for Majesty Appearing. Then we summon Master Flare Appearing. We're going to copy Venus, the other Venus, Destruction Venus, in order to get the Mystical Shine Balls back. And then we're going to use probably an Axis Code line here. We tribute the Moon to. We use the Moon Tribute uh, Mystical Shine Ball to get rid of the Baron. And then we bring it back with Mystical Shine Ball. A little hilarious there. Shows how cool this deck can be when you get the full combo. So we're going into Dagda, and then we go into Axis Code, Axis Code, pop the back row, and that is game. So a little bit showing off the access code lines there. Um, a lot of flexibility, especially when you get uh, Destruction Venus plus Creation Venus, because you can just kind of combo them together um, in order to get a lot of advantage out of them. All right, and the last one we've got is against AI Sky Striker again. Um, so more of a hand test 
as opposed to a proper game, but they start with max C, so at least we had the orange light to negate that. That would have been terrible had that resolved. We searched for, I believe, Neptune, yes, because uh, this might be negated. Yes, it does. Normally, that would be the end of the turn, but we do have the extender with Neptune that we searched off of Sacred Waters. So now we're going to go into Mist to Venus that we discarded with Orange Light earlier in the turn. Trigger it three times. All right, and use two of them to go into Moon. Moon sending Majesty up here in. We're going to summon it by banishing Neptune, which will add Sanctuary in the Sky. We're going to activate it, go into Celestial Night with Parsheth, discard the other Venus to add Christia, then sink the Majesty Flare or <laughs> Majesty up here in plus Earth to go into Majesty Flare up here, and then we're going to copy. Destruction Venus to get three Mystical Shine Balls. They're all going to go back to the deck. Then we can summon them all back again if we wanted to. But here we're just going to go into Opelousa for three. And then we're going to use the effect, the trigger effect of Flesh and Other Parsheth. Because we sent the fairies to the grave, we're going to special summon Christian from our hand. And that is a very hard board to break. That is pretty much an FTK. But they probably should have done Afterburner first. Um, you know, alas. We still have the three Monster Gates, so it's not really a huge deal. We also do have the Master Flare up here onto Targeting Banish, which uh, pretty much still solidifies the end of the game here. We're just using the off loose Negates because we can, and because they went into Hauk, that is the end of the game, pretty much. We drew the Krisha because it went to the top of the deck earlier. Then we're going to use the last two resolutions of Mystical Shine Ball because we do have two more in the deck. We're going to use those for Moon. Moon sending... Um, or Moon adding Earth from deck from Graveyard to Hand because we have Sanctuary and Sky on the field. And then we're going to go into Mag Ma uh, Master up here and off of Earth because we have Sanctuary and Sky on the field. So as you can see, the bonus effects of Sanctuary in the Sky come in in clutch for this hand test. And that is game on board. So yeah, that's the last hand test I have here. Um, I hope this gives you an idea of how this deck can play. Obviously, it does have uh, it, it can struggle playing through multiple hand traps, but... That would, that would be the case for pretty much most of the combo decks these days. But Agents actually does have a pretty solid uh, end board if you can get there. So yeah, I hope that helps you out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And uh, please consider leaving a comment as well. Um, it really helps with uh, the visibility of these videos that I do for this channel. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.